You just happen to be caught up in the midst of it. You got family friend, uh, family and friends that worship other deities. And you're battling with them. And you're thinking that you're battling with them. But you're battling with the gods that they serve. Think about that. There are people that know and make legion to Satan, Hasatan. But there are those that in ignorance don't even know that they're doing it. You have to understand there's a battle between the gods. So in the atmosphere that you can't see. And so in the ancient world, they didn't say what God you serve or what religion you were. They saw your offering. They saw the altar that you made. So that when the text says that in Abraham built an altar to Jehovah, it didn't say that he built an altar. He said, no, he built it to Jehovah. Why? Because the text wanted us to know that who Abraham served, who he's making commitment to, who is his God. So it's very important, my brothers and sisters, as we pick up this biblical text today and examine these things, that Israel was raised up to deal with this polytheism, this false gods. So if you're going to call yourself an Israelite, then you're going to deal with false deity in your own life and your family life and so on and so on. You're not going anywhere. So everything around us is many gods. You hear phrases like, well, what God or what religion you serve or what this and that. But the scripture deals with all that. So that when we look at Abraham and the days of Abraham, this is what we're dealing with. Nimrod, Nimrod, the name Nimrod. Listen, everybody in the ancient world knew that Jehovah was Elohim. Yeah, they did. They knew that. Oh, yeah. But Nimrod, huh? Started with Cush. Cush said, "Now nah, we ain't gonna do that, and you ain't gonna destroy us again. We're gonna build a tower, and we're gonna come up there and, and put you in check." That's the psyche of man. If you don't believe me, you go to the book of Revelation and it says, and they made war with the lamb. Huh? They made war with the lamb. What kind of human being would make war with the lamb unless his mind been rope yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the first idols that we got to deal with, the many ideals, see, the many ideals, I, I serve God this way. I know it says in the book, but I'm going to do it my way. Think about that. The first God that we have to deal is not with the ones outside, but the ones that's in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about that. This is powerful. So politism versus limitism. Watch this here. Are you ready, Mike? Now, you have to understand, because if you're not going to understand Genesis, then you're not going to understand the reason that Israel was raised up. The Most High selected Israel, okay, the seed of Abraham, which we know today as Israel, Hebrews, Israelites, but the purpose of Israel has not changed. Is to deal with the many gods. That's why it's a battle between you and your family. And it shows up more when the holidays come around. Hmm? Because why? The gods want their legion. You have to understand this here. I'm going to read something here. Let's turn to a few verses to check this out as we begin this here. Because we have to understand that what we are dealing with, Israel, is not a religion. Your action, your commitment has to be to the deity that we call Jehovah. And his word is to convict us. Do I have uh, secret altars in our house and in our mind. You see, your word is to dictate us. Your word is to be a lamp to our feet. It's shared to see how we've been worshiping our paying living or legion to other deities. Like the one just passed named Janice. Mm -hmm. Y'all know Janice? Yeah. Huh? 
talk to me, Janus, when we get January, the two-faced deity in Rome, that you look back, say, okay, okay, that's the back, and then I look to the future. It's all around us. What are we going to deal with? It's Janus. They may sacrifice to the god Janus for a new year. They made vows to Janus. Anybody ever made vows on January? That's what we were doing. I want to lose weight. I want to do this here. All these things we make it to Janus and have no idea. See, it's not enough just to know these things. It's like, okay, let's ex expose these things. So, this was my last year. I'm like, no, we ain't doing Janus no more. Don't bite us. We're not doing Janus. Why? Because we have to be a light to our family and our community. So now we got the whole year to tell our family to buy Janice. Send them an email. Send them something. We don't need to be doing that stuff. Well, I didn't make no revolution. But yeah, but you were there. You see what I'm talking about? We can correct things. That's why I like life. We can correct things. No Israelite in this camp should be celebrating January the 1st. What is our new year? A D, Passover. All I'm saying, we expose this darkness into the light. You got a whole year to prepare. <coughs> we don't do this here. Go find out who Janice is. We don't make vows to Janice. We make vows to Jehovah and pay our vows. Amen. Watch this here. Let's go to Amos. Amos chapter 5, verse 8, Mike. The same stuff that we're dealing with continue to get Israel in trouble. That old saying, it was easy to get, get them out of Egypt, but it took a lifetime to get Egypt out of them, and it still didn't happen. 40 years in the wilderness was not enough. And we look at our father and say, okay, I say, okay, how long you been rebelling? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. He's speaking to this old rebellion family of ours in the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 8. Read that for me. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, wow. and turn the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters out of the sea, and poureth them out upon his face of the earth. Jehovah is his name. Mm, Notice that, Jehovah. He's telling Israel. Stop seeking the moon and the stars and all these things. You forgot who you are. You forgot your mission. See, when you don't know your mission, you will join this, you join that. That's why the purpose statement is very important. Why? Because the purpose statement keeps us from a lot of foolishness. If it doesn't, if it doesn't go along with the purpose, it's easy to say no. So because we worship no other deity, it's easy to say the church is, oh, we can't come to your Christmas passion. It's easy to turn down Easter or Halloween. Why? Because we stick to the book. Our purpose is to restore the body of Messiah. That has nothing to do with the body of Messiah. Amen. But when you don't have a purpose, then you go here, you go there. No, no, we're not doing that. Let's go to Romans. Just lay some foundation for a moment. Polytheism versus monotheism. Know why we've been brought into such a time as this, Israel. Our fathers didn't do an excellent job. And we're going to see that. But now we are being enlightened to this, admit this truth. What are we going to do with it? We don't have to apologize for not celebrating these cultures that is not ours. Let's start at verse chapter 1, verse 18. Ain't nothing new. Chapter 1, verse 18. For the wrath of Elohim is revealed from the heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men mm -hmm. who hold the truth in unrighteousness. In other words, they know it. Listen, don't you let these people in Hollywood tell you there's no God. They know it. 
They'll use a television to tell you their view of God and what they think about him. Don't let them talk about they don't believe in God. Yes, they do. Because you're not going to come against something that's not real. Go ahead. Verse 19. Because that which may be known of Elohim is manifest in them. For Elohim hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew Elohim, they glorified him not as Elohim, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Hey, that's what we're living in now? Yes, this is the letter of Paul, and it speaks directly to our generation. Our kids, listen, they go to school. By the time they get out of college, that what you sold in their life, that professor of man blow their mind. How these kids think like how foolish it is to believe in something that you can't see. How are you going to believe that a man built an ark and put all the animals on them? Not knowing that, not talking about today. Because we don't have the same animals as they did now. Breathing and all that kind of stuff. Begin to speak to our kids in college. Don't let them get inside your head, son. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Like all of a sudden, we smarter than the most high. Who, who listen, who hold our very breath in our hand, and you're going to tell me. Now, son, the next time they tell you that there is no God, you tell them, oh, he's talking about you in Psalm 14. The fool says in his heart, there's no God. You tell your professor that. Any of these wise people that say there's no God, they say, oh, he spoke about you 2,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago. The psalmist said the fool in his heart say there's no God. Huh? So here's Paul speaking to these Romans. Remember, this, this is the fourth beast. But they think they're bad, though. This speak to all of us. Who, why? Because we think we're smart in America. We go to school. We educate ourselves. Listen, listen why, watch TV. How over women just think they're just so smart. Man. And people sit there and listen to that junk. They're talking about over saying this here. Of a word is not divine. She's a woman and going to die just like all of us. Yeah. Go ahead. Verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible Elohim into an image made like to corruptible man. Mm -hmm. And to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore Elohim also gave them up to uncleanliness through their lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own body between themselves who changed the truth of Elohim into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Mm -hmm. Notice what he said. They changed, right? That's what happened. When you begin to deny the most high, then you say, oh, it's okay for man and man to be together. It's okay for women. See, once you deny what's already was struggling, to tell you that it's against nature that how can you be fruitful and multiply? Man and man together. Put you on a desert island. You can put a thousand men on a, on a, on a desert island by itself. We'll give you your own land, yachts and everything. Only man can stay on this island. How long that generation is going to last? They can't produce. They can't produce. So even nature itself tells us that. Go ahead. 25. Who changed the truth of Elohim into a lie and worshiped and served the creator more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. For this cause, Elohim gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change their natural use into which is against nature. Listen, you think what we're dealing with today is something new? Oh, 
I told you that this country is built on the Greek or Roman world. It's nothing new. That's why it's easy for them to, this country, to grace this kind of lifestyle. Solomon said, the most wise man said, there's nothing new. Ain't nothing new. When you see the pianos in the in the churches and, 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 and sodomites and homosexuals playing the piano in the church, it's nothing new. Ask, ask Hezekiah. He had to put the sodomites out of the temple. What's new? Nothing new. Nothing new in the sun. Nothing new. We see in Sodom. The vain perfection that want to knock down Lot Doe and say, give me those men. Nothing new. Go ahead. 27. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their mm. lust one, or one towards another. Do you hear that? Burn. Men with men working that which, uh, which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain Elohim and their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You want to believe that? That's what I'm saying. You want to believe that? Because we can deal with our own self. Oh, you want to believe that you can do that? And you justify it in the word, whatever that may be? We have a false teaching even in our uh, culture or uh, Hebrew upbringing. Well, I really don't need a pastor. I don't need a shepherd. <laughs> well, Yahshua said the reason that people are going astray, he said he saw them. He said, oh, they are, the problem is they don't have a shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had compassion on them. In other words, they're ignorant. I know why you're living that way because why? You don't have a shepherd. So he put the blame on the shepherd. So don't believe that lie. Verse 28 again, and even as they did what? Did they not like. Mm -hmm. Did not like to retain Elohim in their knowledge. Oh, what he's saying, soon I leave this place. Whatever he was saying. Mm -hmm. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which were not convenient. Mm -hmm. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, mm -hmm. wickedness, covetousness, maliceness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, magnanimity, whispers, mm -hmm. backbiters, mm -hmm. haters of Elohim, mm -hmm. despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, mm. disobedient to parents, without having understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Elohim that which that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Mm, that's a powerful verse. See why? Because because when I learned about that verse, like you know, I watch shows. I'm just gonna use it as that example. I watch shows that pervert fornication and adultery, okay. but I ain't gonna do it. But I watch it. Come on. I ain't gonna do what Empire does. I ain't gonna sell dope, but I love watching it. Come on, come on. You see what I'm talking about? I ain't gonna shoot nobody, but I watch those kind of shows. That's mm -hmm. what he said. I take pleasure. I ain't gonna do those things. I ain't gonna cheat on my husband. <coughs> Notice that when they have shows about us, the man he ain't never faithful. You did that by accident? <coughs> Women dressing loosely, men are players and drug dealers. You think that's by accident? You think they call it tell a vision? Tell the world a vision about them. And all the world see these movies in power. I used to love to watch it. How do we get to the point where we admire stuff like that? How do we get to the point? Tony Montana, Scarface, my man. See, they programmed us. Scarface? He killed anybody that came in his way? But we got a big Scarface <laughs> poster in his bathtub? How did they convince us to watch stuff like that and make it okay? <clears throat> Think about that. And they have not stopped. 
They are programming us, whether you like it or not. They are teaching our kids messes, whether you like it or not. Say, no, nah, I take pleasure in doing it. See, the Bible trying to take my pleasure away. Am I right? That's what they teach, right? See, if you serve Yah, you ain't going to have no fun. Who, who, who created that? Think about that. The movies that we go, we take, we would never do it ourselves, but we take pleasure in it. See, the only way that we're going to have conviction is, is, is that you have to hear it. They're doing it. That's nothing that you finish watching a movie. That's nothing that say, man, I feel so holy. <laughs> Think about that. I'm saying, let us grow up. The easiest way to know what movie not to watch, we ain't even got to use Yahshua. Can, can Elijah sit down there and watch it with us? Mm, all right. That's right. Okay. Use the kids. We ain't got to use Jesus. Yahshua. Can your child, the moment I say Elijah, you got to go to the other room, that should be a red flag right there. I'm just using that as an example, right? Amen. So Amen. if our kids can't sit down and watch it with us, Think about that. Oh, they don't even do it. You ain't got to, you ain't, you ain't got to go to Ray Autumn or uh, it's Ray G now. They ain't even doing it. What I'm saying is, Paul said, listen, I know that you would never do that. Who knowing the judgment of him, that they would commit such things were worthy of death. Not only do them do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This here Washington was our man, huh? Right. You know what I'm saying? And all this road gangster. Think about that. How they deceived us. This there Washington is my man. But I'm trying to show you how the media deceive us, how they use us. And we are, we are, uh, now, hey, look, we are cheering for the crook. How did they get us to like uh, Al Capone? Notice this, how, how this stuff here. If we know who owned the media, if we know who owned TV, we know who's doing it. So as I look, I said, oh, I know what they're doing, Miss Sharon. They're getting us to call evil yeah. and good. Yeah. You see how sly they are? Yeah. Holly. Somebody go look it up. Holly. Woo. How it got started. Some of the Jewish boys, check, check out everything, everything will be traced back to them. <laughs> what they say in the FBI, follow the money. money. So if you know who got all the money, you know who's doing all the poison. I'm trying to try to help us. So Israel, as we move in this class, think about these things. Think about these things. But all this can be traced all the way back to Genesis. And they know this here. That's why they created the doctrine. The Old Testament is done away with. Knowing that anybody in their right mind will always take new over old. You think they was just, you think they just called it old by accident? You want a new pair of shoes or old pair of shoes? Mm. Think about that. These phrases are not just thrown out there by no reason. So when uh, 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 we have a glimpse in uh, the book of Revelation, it says, and the dragon who, who, who deceived it, the whole alum, the whole world. So that, that includes you and I. We should be Christmas, Easter, Halloween, January, Janice. Then somebody would get smart. Well, all the days of the week are named out there. Yeah, but we ain't we ain't celebrating that. We ain't getting up and say, you know, I'm gonna celebrate, I'm gonna celebrate moon, <laughs> which is Monday. Two, I mean, all of it. We're not making sacrifice to that stuff. When the most high made things, he say day one, day two. The only name that we have for the days for the week is the Shabbat. That's it. So he's going to raise up Israel and say, I'm going to give you the Shabbat and you tell people. 
You be the example. Now watch this here as we come here. So now we're going to go and help Mike to read. This is a simple read in this book here. Too long in the sun. If you ain't got it, get it. Too long in the sun. How are you going to be educated? Too long in the sun. We're going to deal with politism versus monotheism. You have to understand, okay? Excellent book. I ain't going to be one of those teachers that I ain't. Listen, I ain't trying to bend the wheel. And so I want you to think to where we at dealing with Abraham, okay? Abraham came out of that. Matter of fact, let's go to the, the scripture just came to mind. Let's go to the Joshua. Our father Abraham came out of that. Ain't nothing new. I think it's like chapter 24. Uh, uh, Joshua chapter 24. Ain't nothing new. We all got to deal with Are we going to be politicians? Many ways to God. Your way. How can your way be the only way? That's a hard statement right there. So. You have to be honest that Christianity can't be the only only way because Christianity confused you. How can Christianity be the right way when I go to church on December 25th and I see an Asherah? How can it be what Yah call when I see Easter with the Easter egg? See, once you study, you're like, no, 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 that's deception. Have people worshiping God, and you think you're worshiping the true God, but you're not. Think about that. That's very the man. Listen, the Bible says that Genesis 3, chapter 3 says, I mean, verse 1 says, and the serpent was more cunning than all the wobbies. He's more cunning. Crafty. Not I think it's Nasha or Nakash. The serpent, and the word serpent is not like the devil. It means literally means uh, 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 to do divination. Check it out. Divination. He put a spell on the woman. So when Paul said to the Galatians, he said, who has put a spell on you? Who has bewitched you? You used to believe that Yahshua was the only way? You used to believe this here, Paul said, what happened? We see it all around us. We're like, man, what happened? Who has bewitched you? What site on YouTube has bewitched you? You just think I was the I was the best teacher you ever seen, but who has bewitched you? See how easy it can happen. Divination. You're using words. And he didn't listen, you ain't gotta. Uh, miss the whole Bible to be off track. Just one verse. Just one verse. That's all they had. One instruction. Don't eat from this tree. Why? We have an example that we find out through Yeshua. Because the enemy planted that. You got to watch out what the enemy is playing in your life. Just as the most high brain people in our life, the enemy does that too. Amen. And they talk smooth. Yeah. Seems spiritual. Amen. You can listen. I tell you, class, take this to heart. Religion is easy to fake. <laughs> Nobody, listen, you can turn on TV in and learn how to preach. Amen. When I work at CC, my Spanish brothers learn English by watching TV. Amen. You can learn how to be a preacher and not even know anyone. Because most people in the congregation is dead. So we are told to test the word. Think about that. You have to understand the enemy that we're dealing with. We're dealing with a foe that we can't see, but the word exposes it. Think about that. 
So when the word exposed your family and friend, don't apologize. Amen. Don't apologize. It's a guy at work. I heard the other day that uh, one of the employees was asking me about him that now he's uh, saying that God is, go is, is, is frowning on him. Now watch this here. That God is frowning on him. Now, this is the same guy that I've been hearing him and Kevin going back and forward uh, in the kitchen while I'm prepping, right? And he's talking about God uh, that don't exist, all this kind of stuff, right? Well, some reason, I told my testimony. I don't know why I did. And I got fancy, man, I don't know why I'm telling this here. The guy said, you know what? I want to know what it feels to live life so. So I prayed for the guy, right? Bam, bam. I mean, in the, it was just, just like this. Just, I prayed for him, right? So when she was telling me that, I said, oh, you talking about the same guy who didn't believe in God? I said, what happened? I prayed for him. Now there is a waking. Hallelujah. When he first started, he didn't. Hallelujah. No. So now he said, I say, how can he who don't believe in God say God frowning on him? See, awakening. Awakening. You're going to see the people that we're going to see in the next 10 to 20 years, people that never stepped foot in church. Amen. And they're going to see this stuff here, and they're going to say to the deacons and the elder, listen, y'all see, I'm talking about gangsters. Who's real? Wow. They're gonna say, "Listen, when I was a gangster, I was real. Now I'm a gangster for Yeshua. I'm real." Right. This ain't right, Pastor. Can you give out four or five of them, Pastor? This ain't right. Man. We're the spirit of Elijah. So, yeah. Verse one, chapter twenty-four. <laughs> And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for the heads and for their judges and for the officers. And they presented themselves before Elohim. And Joshua said unto all the people, I love the way that Joshua did this here. He called those in authority. Listen, if you can't get the people in authority that's with you to come on board, you ain't going to worry about the people. They ain't coming on board. So what Josh did, he called the elders, those that are in charge. Then the people. Because if Josh was just standing up himself, they'll say, well, what are elders at then? You see, those little things you have to pay attention. Amen. And Joshua said unto all the people, thus says Jehovah Elohim of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side in the flood in old time. Even Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacor, uh -huh. and they served other Elohim. Did you hear that? They served other Elohim. So now listen, I'm telling you, there are other Elohim out there, mighty ones, strong ones. There's a battle. Remember when we was given a little insight when Daniel was praying? He said, Daniel, you know, Michael said, listen, Daniel, the moment you start praying, I was coming. This Michael, the archangel. But he said, but the prince of Persia withstood me. He had to call for backup. So here we give it to Daniel that there are demons or legions over cities that control cities. That control region. I'm saying, yeah, give us more understanding about what's going on. This is a spiritual battle here. So Paul comes along later on and says, listen, the spirit is our warfare are not corner. Flesh, but they're mighty through God. Yeah. Paul said that we do not fight against flesh and blood. We read that, but we still don't understand it. Yeah. So if you, if you go to a church and say, man, that church has been dysfunctional for years. Well, what do you think the spirit is then? Yeah. The spirit of dysfunction. But if you never come to that spirit, because the person who's doing it is the one who controls the other church. Amen. You don't want to tell Big Mama because Big Mama the one that always you run to for your car note mm -hmm. or when you're behind. Mm -hmm. Think about that. That's witchcraft. The reason that you really won't tell that person the truth because you might need something from that person. Mm -hmm. So now you have made that person God. Mm -hmm. Just case God don't come through, I got one on the earth.
When you look at the polytheism, the many gods, as I was in the room, I would think like, well, I mean, that's kind of good because if this God don't work out with Sharon, then I can run to this God here. So I'm going to listen. Y'all remember that scripture? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to it, though. I'm going to get to it. It just, just popped in my mind. In a minute, as I'm going, say ding, then I remember, okay? Ding. Just in case I forget. Ding. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, just run the ding. Is that? If I'm get to that verse. That's just my clue. Okay. So, Abraham grew up in a family. In a time where there was more that people worship many deities. Yes. Yes. Though they knew God, Paul said, though they knew God, but they didn't acknowledge God. Right. So men know God, Paul said, they knew him. But I don't like that God because he won't let me have orgies in the temple. I don't like that God because he won't let me avenge my enemy. So, so men go form the God that fit their lifestyle. So when people say, well, my God won't send me to hell. Well, I know he won't because he don't exist. <laughs> so Tara, you have to see, listen, this is where we come from. We came from a family tree that did these things. So in the mix, watch it all. In, the, in this family, there's those who celebrate certain things and those that don't. This is what Abraham lived in, this kind of community. He wasn't in charge of terror. So if Abraham wants to do something or change, he got to get out of terror tent. But as long as terror is alive, that was a culture thing. You don't dishonor your parents. I don't care what culture you live in, I don't care what religion, you don't honor your parents. You, you, you do not dishonor your parents. So we see that we all have grown up in households, right? What not half of us did, we all did it. We all did it. So the text, this biblical text is trying to show us what we did from the beginning and how the Most High chose us despite what we was doing. He called our father Abraham out. So don't count our families out. He's still calling them out. He's still calling them out. Think about that. You keep walking the way that you're walking in the Torah. Let your light so shine. Because if the Most High dealing with them, okay, dealing with them, but you do your family no, no justice if you uh, seek been hanging out with them on these days. Amen. It's like a church mixing. What church? You don't have to say the name, but is it, the church doing Passover and Easter? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you scared to tell them the whole truth, number the truth. You have a, a divided church. Think about that. So Tara did those things. Go ahead, because we ain't even got started yet. Verse 3. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and I led him throughout all the land of Canaan. Okay, okay, now that, so now he took Abraham, so he called out. That's why you're here today. He calling you out. So if he call you out, then don't go back in. Amen. Remember, a guy told me that that the most high told him I was studying at the house. You know, God told me to come study with you. So he studied with me for a while. And then so I was like, what is it? I ain't been sitting at the Bible study. And so I just happened to run into him. I said, oh man, what's up, man? I ain't seen you in a while. I said, man, I ain't seen you every Bible study. He said, well, I just ain't been coming. I said, well, uh, when God told you not to come. So, I mean, God is not like that. God is not like that. Amen. Now, if he tell you to come, I say, well, did y'all tell you to leave? He couldn't answer that. And bless his heart, he's in a place that he don't want to be. Meaning inc incarceration. There's so many guys I can look back in these nine years. 
that they don't have to be what he had if they were stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm all that, but I'm just saying, if y'all brought you to me, then allow me to nourish you, to help you, to keep you accountable. Don't believe people when people say, well, I, you don't need... You don't need no church or shepherd. No, you just saying, tell the truth. You got something in your life you don't want to be accountable for. That's bottom line. Bottom line. Who you think you're talking to? So now watch this here. Dealing in this world. So now, let's lay some foundation down here. Here we go, Mike. We're going to pick up here. I'm going to give you some history, okay? Very important. Because what I want you to understand that the battles of the gods has not changed. If we're going to call ourselves Hebrew Israelite Israel, then the assignment still has not changed. Go ahead. Uh, I just saw something. Sorry. Okay, so, so, see, he got a lot. Do I need to read? No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Hey, there's some good information. Get this book, okay? It's not written in an academic uh, style, but I'm using words, but, but I'm telling you, nothing has changed. You want to read the scripture or just read the paragraph? Well, I don't. While there seems to be hints in antiquity of the knowledge of Elohim of the Bible, there is one thing that is sure. History reveals that the sun has played an important role in the pantheon of all known civilizations. The purpose of this documentation is to the chart uh, is to chart the progression of the sun worship from antiquity through the present and to consider its influences upon, upon Christianity. Sun worship has greatly influenced Chalde, the Chaldeans, Assyrians, Babylonians, Medo-Persians, Greco-Romans, and modern-day culture. To understand how sun worship has progressed throughout all these countries, it is important to briefly examine the major world empires, as all of the details of these empires would have required hundreds of books to relate. We will only document that the sun was their chief object of worship. The Chaldean Empire, the Chaldean Empire. As one descends from the mountains of Uratu, the area in which Lois Ark landed, the crosses the tributaries of the Tigris River, he entered into a vast plain. This plain was home of the Kushite kingdom of Babylon, the area between and along the Tigris and Euphrates river, rivers. The Bible informs us that Nimrod set up a kingdom. And Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one on earth, and he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalneh in the land of Shinar. Genesis 10, 8 through 10. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime, and had they for mortar. To go now, uh, be, because of man's rebellion, language languages were confounded, and because the people of the earth were scattered, and the people of the earth were scattered. It is important to note that the rebellion took place in the kingdom of Nimrod. Many historians have identified the biblical family of Ham, Cush, and Nimrod as the source of the post. Blood, false religions. It is not the main focus of this book to document this connection. The facts presented will reveal that the sun worship of most ancient times, known by many as the Chaldean mysteries, is still being practiced unknowingly by many claiming the title Christian. The example of the deification of monarchs seems to have begun with Nimrod. The deification of monarchs seems to have begun with Nimrod under the title of Bilu Nimru, or Baal Nimrod, the worship of Nimrod by the name of another has passed down through history to present times. A king by the name of Urkham and Urk seems to have been Nimrod's successors. The ruins of gigantic temples are found bearing brick with his name. These temples face east, eastwards east towards the rising sun. Many of these temples are dedicated to the sun, Belus and Baal Nimrod. They bring to mind the great shrines of sun worship built by the Egyptians. Could the Egyptian structures be in honor of Nimrod under another name? As we will discuss, the sun god does not care what you call him as long as you worship him. 
There is evidence that the Chaldeans knew Elohim of Genesis who created heaven and earth. What a shame that they chose to worship and serve the created more than the creator. The Cushite Chaldeans became polytheistic, worshiping the sun, moon, and planets. In other words, sun worship, the Nippu, which many scholars believe believed to be the Nimrod of the Bible, was elevated by man to a statue of God and worshiped as, a, as the chief deity, polytheism. Mother goddess worship also, was also an important part of the Chaldean uh, culture. Beltis, the wife of Bel Nimrod and mother of his supposed son, Nin, was worshiped as the mother of Elohim. By way of the proposed reincarnation of Baal and Nimrod as Nin, she was also known as both the mother and wife of Nin, making Nin his mother's husband. That made Beltis the mother of God. It has been documented that worship of Beltis and Nin originated in the veneration of the mother and child. Now, when you think about that, being the mother of God, what religion on the slide? Yes, the mother of God. Yeah. Also, important to our study is the, the Chaldean goddess Ishtar, Nana, and Astre, as her ceremonial worship has been incorporated into traditional Christianity through the celebration of Easter. The names of these other mother goddesses have been identified as other names for Beltis, mother of God. Uh, Easter, the Chaldean, the, Ch the Chaldean sun god and goddesses, although of a personal nature, having life stories, were represented by created objects, i.e., the heavens, the sun, moon, planets. From the earliest known records of archaeology, uh, archaeological finds, it becomes immediately apparent that as people migrated to one to other parts of the world, the worship of the heavens is practiced in. Chaldea times became the basis of classical mythology. After examining the information contained in, the, in this book, you will discover that this is no accident, but it is a satanic plan to undermine the true worship of Elohim. Get that book, excellent book. Now, notice this here. What you got here? Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If anybody, yeah. If if anybody uh want to have that, what's up? Uh, so as you see that when people look at or don't understand that this book was given to Israel to let them know what happened. So if anybody <laughs> otherwise saying that if you want to know why we got different languages, bang. So everyone leaves uh, Nimrod scattered, but they have this same story. So that when you find the story of the flood in Indian and other countries, yes, because why? They might be some different, but it's tracing back to Genesis. Very important. So don't let them deceive you when somebody say, well, in, 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 in Indian or other country, they have a flood story. Yes. Because Jesus said that people scatter, so they took the story with them. Very important. But if you notice that it was in Genesis and Nimrod kingdom that rebelled against the Most High, said, no, we're not going to worship you like that. We're not going to do that. So Israel is raised up for the purpose of the bringing the one true God back to mankind. That's the purpose of Israel, and the Shema is the token of that. The Shema is a... Is is a against paganism. Very important. I'm gonna read something here. Hallelujah. Uh, this is from my other book here, uh, biblical illustration that you, you can get it from the Bible bookstore. It says here that the Israelites of the Old Testament time came into contact with the Canaanites, if you know who that is, the Egyptians and the Babylonians and other people who worship false gods. God warned His people not to imitate their pagan neighbors. Yet the Israelites disobeyed him. Am I right? Yeah. They slipped into paganism again and again. The question should be, what did these pagan nations worship and how did they pull the Israelites away from the true God? I mean, just think about that. You have to understand that 
The reason that the Canaanites or the Israelites were so attracted to the Canaanites because they spoke the same language, the same dialogue. Okay? So they was close to one another. Okay? So uh, that's why it was easy to do that, right? So it says here, uh, da, 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 this is where I want to go. By studying these pagan cultures, we learned that how man attempted to answer the ultimate question of life before he found the light of Elohim Chu. Also, we come to understand the world in which Israel lived, a world from, uh, uh, from which we shall call to be radical, different, and both an ethnic and, and teach. In other words, Israel was to be different. So when we use the word Kadosh, holy, was holy unto Yah. It wasn't an accident. He said, I, I have a document here that I took your father, Abraham, from the other side. So we can see here, there must be always a crossing over. There must be always a crossing over. And we have not come out just because we said Jesus or Yahshua, if you're still anticipating in pagan things. It's not half-hearted here. So, so he has to challenge us here. Now watch this here. Before beginning a such study, we should note some of the caution. First, we need to remember that we stand in at least 2,000 years from the pagan culture we are about to describe. It, then he, he says here, second, we should realize that we live in a, a world, a society in which every person is free to believe or disobey, <laughs> believe as he chose. But ancient people felt that some sort of religion was necessary. Okay, then I goes on in here, excellent book. But the challenge for Israel was to be different from the other nations, and it has not changed. It has not changed. It was us, the first thing that we read about King, that we want to be like the nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. Because even in the ancient world, guys, that when you travel from city to city, right, you had to pay homage to that deity. This is what I'm saying. You had to pay homage. You could bring your God there. Because you had to have an idol because they they believe that once you leave out of Egypt, then you had to have a statue of raw to go with you. That's why when Rachel left the house, she took the household God. Think about that. You need something. I need an image. I need an image of something. So that should tell you. That's why y'all say, when you heard my voice, you didn't see no image. No image. Why? Because they made images in the think about that. The Roman Catholic Church full of images. And we know that's not Mary. We know who that is. Go way back to Babylon. Somewhere right. That's her. The taboo. It's right here. Chapter 4 said. But at verse 15, take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that Jehovah spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. Mm. The similitude of any figure and the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, and the likeness of the likeness of any winged fowl that flyeth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And lest thou lift, it, lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, and even all the hosts of heaven, should be driven to worship them mm. and serve them, mm. which Jehovah thy Elohim hath divided unto all nations under the whole earth. And given to them. Heaven. Give it to them. Notice that. Don't look up there. Now, we don't look up there anymore. But when you're standing in the grocery line, they right there. That little piece of paper called, y'all know what it's called? Huh? Horoscope. I don't celebrate the stuff. I, I mean, I, but I read it before. I just didn't believe it. But it doesn't matter what you and I believe. They believe that. 
if the sun, the stars, were a certain place. There are people today, calm me down. Remember her? Call me down. Sister Cleo. <laughs> Call me now. Yeah. I'm like, Miss Cleo, why you didn't know the feds was coming? <laughs> she knew everything else, but she knew the feds was coming. <laughs> huh? But everybody used to call her. Yeah. Huh? And they said, man, how she knew that thing? Like, if you knew it, of course she knew. It's called a familiar spirit. Mm -hmm. The demons yeah. was familiar with your mama. It's right in our book. No, we should not get caught up with this stuff. This book is written to Israel, given to Israel. This is what the people do, Israel. Do not deal with familiar spirits. Talking to the dead? What was talking about? Oh, the stars, the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very important. And I was thinking, I said, this is incredible. Because you remember, I told you that Israel, our ancestors in the book of Isaiah, was telling us that as they was going into captivity, that they, that Yah put them in check. He said, you have made a table for that God. But they translate it as uh, true, true. But if you look it up, it's the God Gag, which is the which is the God of fortune. The God of fortune. You made a table. So instead of depending on Yah for their future, their fortune, they're depending. They're making sacrifices to this deity. Yeah. And so I thought about it as I was sitting here with Big Bernie. I said, man, back in the day, we used to love to go to fortune. Yeah. Let's run right there. See how they put it right in our face? And every time we walk through the door, I bet you, right there, two you walk in, it's a statue right there. Right there. And because we are not educated in this country about this stuff, when, when, when you make, watch this here, when you, okay, you got something? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this up. That when you uh all deities, you have to make an offer to them, a drink offer, a sacrifice. So watch this here. This one I want to deal with. You can just uh -huh. okay. So we see Israel was warned not to do this here, right? Now remember, they came out of Mizraim, Egypt. And I can take you to Ezekiel. Why not only why listen? Uh -huh. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel for a moment. Ezekiel chapter 20. I want to show you something here. See, when we depending on quick loan, our 401k, all these things that we are depending on, I can't to retire. Can't wait to retire. I mean, all of these things that man set up is a trap. And so all your life that you you talk, boy, I got three more years to go. Boy, I got to, you know what I'm saying? And y'all saying, listen, that was a wealthy man in the Bible. And she was saying, listen, he said, listen, I'm so wealthy, man. Listen, I got so much money. Man, tear down the bone and build some bigger ones. Yeah. And the scriptures say that, and Yahshua say, Fool, thy soul is required of you. Think about that. How that we are chasing the God of fortune. Can't wait to retire. Can't wait to do this here. Say it. I told you he's crafty. He's crafty. 
What you got? Wait, uh, I just I worked in a nursing home before, and uh -huh. a lot of times when they would retire, and somebody might need to hit it. To, and when they would retire and just not do anything, they actually go down faster physically, mentally, and it has to be spiritually too for all three of you. So, but yes, See? you'll you'll lose it. If you don't use it, you'll lose it physically. Mm -hmm. See. Watch this here. Now, this is what I'm trying to bring out. Because, because Israel was called to be different, radical different. And though their world will a thousand years from their world, but we just got as many deities in this country than they have. So what's going to protect our children? What's going to protect us when the cycle of their Holidays come around and our holy days come around and our children want to go sacrifice to their deities. You think you're going to just a celebration? No. Because Yah, he knows that that celebration has a deity behind it. Janus. Let's just deal with Janus and so Janus here for a moment. Go on and pull up Janice on your phone, somebody. Now, how much Janice? Huh? How much liquor got spent on Janice? Huh? Think about the sacrifice you sacrificed to Janice. Sleeping around, orgies, and everything. All for the name of Janice. Now, he said in the book, he don't care what you call it. As long as you worship. We keep a Janice alive. The deep, I'm trying to get y'all to understand. There's a spirit that's connected to each holiday. Just like when someone come and celebrate a Passover, who they worship? Jehovah. Think about that. When you celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle, I mean, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to show you. So, if Yah has His holy days and is connected to Him, then who is that? All I'm saying is that when we come against or come to a culture or something, a holiday that's not ours, then it has to be questioned. Like, well, where did it come from? Because it was not given to us. You see, because, I mean, I don't do the Chinese New Year. Why? Because that's not my culture. And what my Spanish brothers going to be doing, Sigma Mario Day, I mean, I, that's not my culture. See, you can understand that, right? So I'm saying that Christmas is not our culture as a Hebrew Israelite. Jan is them, all the things. See, listen, when you start sitting like that, like, that's not part of our culture. So once you, listen, once you embrace your culture, it's easy to say, no, that's not my culture. It's easy. In Ezekiel chapter 20, right? Listen to what it says. Let's pick it up in, in verse 1 then. And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of Jehovah and sat before me. Uh -huh. Then came the word of Jehovah unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them, Thus says Jehovah thy Elohim, Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, says Jehovah Elohim, I will not be inquired of by you. Mm -hmm. Will thou judge them, son of man? Will thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. Can you, do you hear this conversation going on? Mm -hmm. He say, no, 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 I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. You scared to speak about the abomination. How can a leader? Y'all say, you come to me? Mm -hmm. so you come to me? <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 5. Say unto them, thus says Jehovah the Elohim, in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, 
saying, I am Jehovah, your Elohim. In the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, with which is the glory of all lands. And watch it here. Then I said unto them, cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, uh -huh. and defile not yourself with the idols uh -huh. of Egypt. Uh -huh. I am your holy. What they were doing Lord. in Egypt? See, we look at the slavery thing. But Ezekiel said, oh no, before that, before that, this is what they were doing. Right. This is what they were doing, Danny. This is what they were doing. Oh, the Egyptians had, no, no, no. Our father was down now celebrating raw, Horace, that's what they was doing, making idols, sacrificing. That's what they was doing first. So y'all say, I, listen, I delivered them and told them to cast away every man their abomination. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But they did what? But they rebelled against me and were not hearken unto me. They did not every, not every man cast away the abomination of their eyes. Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. I wonder what, I wonder what really, okay, now watch this here. So if they in Egypt doing good, right? But Miss Aaron, they start doing their own thing. Right. See, when Joseph died, I'm sure they weren't doing none of that stuff. But when Joseph died, they say all that generation, now they ain't got no leader. Well, then, no, they're like, now, nah, man, I'm Joseph, God, leader. Now we ain't got, listen, he was always in their heart to do it anyhow. Boy, you really want to know what kind of person you are. Really? I learned this. I said, no, nah, I said, no, nah, no, nah. doesn't matter if anybody around or whatever. What you are in the dark, that's who you are. Right. When I learned, I said, oh, I don't kill nobody around. I ain't watching that. I ain't smoking that. I ain't doing that. Why? Because I'm like, that's who I am. I'm like, no, that, that's not me. Hey, but when nobody's around, that's your real character. It's what we are in the inside that nobody can see. See, the real person is in the inside. Mm -hmm. Girl, I ain't mean to say that. Yes, she did. Opportunity to just put say it itself. Amen. Here they are in Egypt. Here we are in America. Then at the dog track, the lights, y'all saw them, right? Wonderland. Y'all got a land for us, but it ain't Wonderland. <laughs> what did Elijah like say? He can't what? He can't wait to take that mess down. <laughs> 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 hey, well, I, said, I said, I can't wait to take that mess down. See, our generation, our kids we got here, they would have to rebel. But they know they can't bring it here. Whatever present they give you, you better leave it over there. Because they why? Because they know they can't bring it here. They can't bring it home. And just as Yah was watching them, I'm telling you, is that this what they was doing in Egypt? He says that. Neither did they forsake the idols. Idols. That's what they're doing. Now, we can knock them, but have we forsaken the idols of America? The enemy is so crafty that it, it can be slick, okay? Like the ones that don't even know. Like they did bad, like, like uh, my favorite one used to be was 4th of July. Until, until I thought, like, now you know where your ancestors was in 1776? Yeah. On a plantation. So what did they really celebrate? What about one that looks so innocent? You know what I'm saying? That look innocent. What about Thanksgiving? Which, which should be called Bisgiving. Y'all know where we got all our understanding of America holidays? From America. 
Come on. They not going to tell us the whole truth. They ain't tell us nothing. We all know, they know, well, I know he didn't discover America. Why won't you put it in the textbook? One textbook that they had to uh, 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 redo because they say that the slaves came over as volunteer service. <laughs> yes. They came over as volunteer. Now, the question that I want to just turn to here because I'm talking about a textbook. A textbook. Check it out. In a textbook. But I'm trying to say, okay, in the front of this textbook that's going to be put in a school, and it was it was a young man who saw it and he called his parent, his mom, his mom put him a check, and then they took the book out, right? But they're going to revive it. But no, no. But, but here's the question I want you to think about it. In the front of every textbook, it probably got about 20 names of PhD, DAD, MAD, blah, 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 that said that they, they looked through this textbook. So I really don't have a, that much of a problem with, you know, they trying to deceive about saying that. But I have a problem with all these names that agree with that. Okay. Okay, the statement is just wrong. But, but uh, PhD, how did you come up with that conclusion? I like to talk to the PhDs that agree with that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? In all your textbook, you only have Professor So and So, Professor So and So, right? Am I right? Right. right. How did they, these, listen, these people sat in the room and they all agreed. I'm trying to tell y'all. So they're in Egypt. He's telling them, forsake the idols. Then he said, I will pour out my fear. Now, this is what I want to say. Be, before this here. Now, could it be possible? Because the text tells us that the king heart, right, is in the hand of your home, and he turned it as a river. So could it be that the Most High said, put those things away, stop doing that, stop doing that, stop doing that. Say, oh yeah, okay, Pharaoh heart. At one time, Pharaoh was favored with them. Now all of a sudden, it seemed like a new Pharaoh. Could it be just not such a, a new pharaoh, but a new heart towards these people. Yeah. Think about that. See, Ezekiel said, no, no, no. Before this started, this is what they was doing. See, how can we be delivered when we was told that we could be in this world, but not of this world? We have knowledge that the God of the Bible is our God, but somehow we say, well, Though that's what they mean to them, but not to me. Oh, it's the same. Y'all hear that stuff all the time, don't you? That might have been a long time ago that you see uh that Jeremiah say, Don't go in the forest and cut down the tree. Then a smart addict will say, Well, I didn't go down, I didn't go in the forest and cut the tree down. You see how we justify it and how they kind of stuff? Yeah, all these kind of things. And then they want us to say, Oh, so that was I. I was like, no, Miss Johnson, the house burned down, and they discovered it was the Christmas tree. You see, what you got for me? <laughs> this is Ezekiel sixteen fifty five. It says, when thy sisters Sodom and her daughters shall return to their former estate, and Samaria and her daughters shall return to their former estate. Then thou and thy daughter shall return to your former state. You know, I'm just thinking. Mm -hmm. So as we journey, understanding the true God versus the many gods. And we have a testimony of the gods being battled. Daniel give us a nice illustration. The Most High is going to make himself known. Nebuchadnezzar testified for all Israel, not to the world, all Israel, that your God is God. Did not he testify? It's in our book. It's the king of Babylon. Say, Daniel, we know that your God is God of gods. Nebuchadnezzar was so powerful uh, in his conviction. He said, now, if anybody else speak anything against your God, I'm cutting him in half. 
Think about that. Showing us that our God is the God of all gods. Watch this here. Let's go to a text here. Let's go to uh, Let's do chapter 23. Uh, Second King, chapter 23. Hmm, <laughs> Reformation time. Should mention this place right here. Young Josiah was a renegade against all this stuff. When he discovered, notice that if you read the whole chapter from chapter 22 to chapter three, uh, 23, he discovered the Torah. Now, he had been doing what he knew. But when he discovered the Torah, he realized, oh my goodness. See, we've been doing what we were doing in Christianity, right? But now that we discovered the Torah, or should I say the Torah discovered us. So what did he do here that that the Most High speak, spoke to him? Uh, the, the, the man is so messed up. But the king, verse 18, uh, not in the, let's do uh Start at verse 1, chapter 23, verse 1. And the king sent, <clears throat> and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of Jehovah, and all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of Jehovah. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before Jehovah to walk after Jehovah and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and with all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And, and all the people stood to the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest and priest of the second order and the keepers of the door and to bring forth out of the temple of Jehovah all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. Did you hear what he just said? He brought them out of the temple. He didn't have to go to a pagan temple. This was in the temple. It takes a strong leader that once he discovered the truth to tell those elders that they can't put up that tree anymore. He had to count the cost. Do we go from a five bedroom to a two bedroom? Do we go from the Ben, the Lexus, to a, you know what I'm saying, a Nissan? You don't get no more gators. No tailor-made suits. So he, a lot of stuff he had to think. <laughs> had to tell Miss uh, So and So she can't go on the shopping spree. <laughs> see, that's a lot he had to consider. But I want you to see that this stuff was in the temple. Folks, there's nothing new. There's nothing new. We need many Josiahs in our days. Amen. We do. Go ahead. And he put down the adulterous priest. Whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the city of Judah. Now, today it'll be preachers. Put preachers in that. Read that again and put preachers. Or pastors. You really got a compliment in my read now. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he put down in the adulterous preachers for whom the king of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the hosts of heaven. Uh 
-huh. That's what we was doing. That's what we was doing. Ain't nothing changed. The more you learn, you'll see it. The more you learn, you'll see it. Now, just think about in our ignorance. But now we're not even about the Sabbath, the feast, and so on, right? Amen. So if I do Janus because I want to do Janus. Think about that. There's a difference between, I told the other day, there's a difference between sin and transgression and iniquity. All sin ain't the same. Think about that. See, before we knew this stuff, we all fall short because we didn't know. But now, if I go and do certain things that I know that Christmas is not of Yah, have anything to do with Yah, I go do it. That's not sin. That's a transgression. That's not get it twisted. Then your transgression uh, 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 changed to iniquity. Now it's a stronghold. I know people love to say, oh, the Bible says we all sin and come short. Okay? That's not what Paul was talking about. Paul was talking about salvation in that text. I learned this years ago. If you be honest with yourself, see, I can do anything I want to live in freedom. Right? I can do that. So I know that if I go out there and do something, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I ain't gonna lie to myself. So I say, you know what? I say, it ain't no, uh, 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 it, ain't, it ain't the devil. I just like doing it because it feels good. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said that. The Bible says sin is good for a season. Mm -hmm. For a season. But the Bible said that Moses forsook the pleasure of Egypt. That's why I tell y'all, don't tell kids, go 18 year old, your 19 year old, don't have sex because that's not good. What? Then he go through experience and now nah, my mom lied to me. Okay. You tell them what the book says. That don't stir up the fire. Don't like the fire because it's hard to put that fire out. It's amazing how the house of tongue will tell you, uh, uh, you know, how how believers that have the book of the covenant, our Elohim made male and female. It, it, it's 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 almost like the only place that you can't mention sex is in the place where we should be teaching it right. Mm -hmm. But but the world show us teach our kids what sex is. We have no problem with that. But the moment that you mention in church, it's like, oh. see, they taught us that. Subliminal message. Did he say sex? Did he say all just for, that's all in the Bible. So they're going to dummy down us, not to, you know what I'm saying, mention it to our kids, but we'll, we'll tell them. Well, the same thing about the enemy, too, about like not saying his name in the house. But, Think about that. And that, that right there crippled the church, I believe, because they don't know who their enemy is, like, what character mm -hmm. it is, what to look for. Mm -hmm. you know, that was crippling right there. Israel, we need to correct some things here. Sure. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you another verse here. Verse 6. Let's skip that. Let's go to eight, uh, Leviticus chapter 18. Very powerful word. Chapter 18. The many gods versus the true God. Think about how Israel, those who have this Bible here, the, the word of Yah. Every, everything been changed, man. Everything. It's called the Torah. But you can't even use Torah because people have been dumbing down don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah. The book of the covenant. 
Everything has been changed. The matrix. The Holy Scriptures. Paul never called it. He said the Holy Scriptures, Timothy. Thou has known the Holy. Everything has been changed. If you think that changing something does not affect it, yes, it does. Thou has known the Holy Scriptures. Matter of fact, the one came out with one years ago is called the Scriptures. And it has the names in there, Esau. It has all the names of, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, Yama Yahoo, Yes Yahoo. You know, it, it's amazing how the enemy knows because because you can tell who 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 the people of Yah is because it has Yah at their name. Yama Yahoo. Yes, Yahoo. I mean, it is there. So if you want to purchase one of those, I know if y'all gonna go broke around here trying to buy books. <laughs> I meant to let you read from that one. Forgot about it. Uh, I said Leviticus, right? I'm gonna show you something why this is important. Dealing with chapter 18. A word at the most high. Give me the word here. Ah, uh, Mike, chapter eighteen, the first one. <laughs> And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am Jehovah your Elohim. Now watch this. I am. So now remember, they are out of Egypt. But remember, we saw in the book of Ezekiel. This one event. I got a whole one right here. That's the only water right there. Hallelujah. I prayed over it. Hallelujah. 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 That's the blessed water. Now, now, watch this here. So now we saw, right, in Ezekiel, what our father was doing, right? So now that he brings them out of Egypt, but remember, Egypt is in them, what they was doing. You have to know that it's going to be very difficult for certain people, for some of us in our community, though they can be out, but they still need to be, be protected from their family. So those who are fresh in it, when the seasons come around, then perhaps the ones who, who you're close to, bring them over your house. Maybe they're not strong enough yet to deal with the pressure of Christmas and, and Easter and Halloween. Tell them to come over your house. Save them, a, uh, have them a sacred place. That's how I did back in the day that when I was, you know, delivered from Drugs and things like that. I had a safe house in Alvin, in Al Gore. Yeah, Al. Then all I did on the weekend, just what? I mean, that's what I did. On the weekend, I did my thing, right? So when I was born again, all my spiritual parents, I, I, used, I used to just come down and sit there. They knew what I was doing. I was just sitting there. It was fine. Just to the weekend. They let me stay on the weekend because why? The weekend was calling my name. So I had a safe house. Some of you need a safe house. Stop playing with yourself. And that helped me. Huh? Until I got stronger, then it didn't matter. But it took me some years. Why? Because, man I, was, man, I did that stuff for seven years. Hustling and doing all that kind of stuff. You need a safe house. You got to. Because those desires don't go away until you conquer them. Now watch this here. So, so he delivered them, right? Then he says in verse 3. Do not do not do as they do in the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt, uh -huh. where you dwelt. And do not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. And do not walk in their laws. Do my right rulings and guard my laws to walk in them. Now, notice this text here. This is a very powerful text. King James says it this way. And after the doing of the, of the Erech or the land of Mitzrayim, wherein you dwell. You shall not do. We saw that, right? Mm -hmm. 
So what they was doing, they was making idols to who? Ra, the sun god, Horus. And nothing changed. That when you look at the gods, nothing changed. All false religion starts from Sumer, Ur, the Chaldees. And it just calm down. Doesn't matter what you call them. So when you look at some of the uh, uh, starting in Egypt, we see that that Nimrod was the man, right? Nimrod was worshipped. Nimrod was killed by who, Miss Bernice? Talk to me. Shem. Somebody had to take him out. And then as the Babylonians moved, then Egypt came on the scene. Then we got raw. But remember, it's still the same person. Because he was like God. Ra, the sun god, and then as we move from Egypt to Greece, we see Zeus. Then as we come to the Romans, we see Jupiter, but all can be traced back. So nothing started. Nothing has changed. It just passed on. Then when we come to the sun of these gods, we see in Babylon is Tamu. In Egypt is Horus. In Greece is Odom. In Rome, Apollo. I just love to watch Apollo. What I'm saying is all around us. And only the Torah revealed these things to us. So after he says that that after the doing of, of the land of Egypt, after, uh, uh, where you dwell, you shall not do. The word do here is, uh, is the word uh, uh, asa means to make. The first time it was used, it was used when it, Y'all said, let us make man, right? So here is Israel. They're making something. What they're making? Idols. We saw that in Ezekiel. They're making idols. Y'all say, I don't need no images. I don't need an image. I already got an image. You the image. You created in my image. If I look for an image, I want to look at you. You my image. Amen. Now people will be people will think that listen, I mean that's that's real deal. So I'm created in the image of God. So after the doing of the then you say then after the land of Canaan. Now I'm going into Canaan. I mean it's like it's, I'm trying to figure out that if you want us to be holy and righteous, take us away from all this stuff. Why we gotta pass through Canaan? I mean, you're thinking like, well, why? Because you're going to be my bamarang. Think about that. We got to go through and eradicate the hours, the idols in these nations. Right now, we destroy. Some of us are now, now, now. I didn't have a big family like that, but we destroy grandma's celebration. We mess it up anniversaries and celebrate and we y'all we destroying the family. Don't you know? You messing up family tradition, all this Jewish stuff. See? We tear down altars. You said about we tear down altars. Who you think you are gonna mess up the family tradition? You know it was started in 1960. I'm trying to show you how that you can eradicate. He like y'all can take away that seat because I ain't gonna be here. See, every we have to, that's what we're doing. When we're not showing up, we're destroying the altar and the ones in the family that it means so much to. Those are the ones that say, I pick up the phone and call. Them. Mama say, come on over here. You don't have, okay, okay. We ain't going to buy you no present, but Mama say, she, she needs you to come on. You know Grandma loves you. She said that you the favorite. Start throwing all that motion oh, stuff in her right now. So you going to, so, so you telling me that you're going to break Grandma's heart over this stuff. You know, all your life, Grandma, who was there when you were sick? She started, now all that stuff started coming at you. Right? I ain't sick now. Yeah. When you was in college, who's sending you money? Grandma. Hmm? When your mama took you out, who took you in? Grandma. When you got pregnant, couldn't take care of that baby? Who took care of the baby? Grandma. 
If, if they start talking like that, run and don't ask the point. <laughs> <laughs> But, but do you understand the battle? The battle that our ancestors had to deal with and with the, the purpose of Israel. That you can't bring these idols here. You can't do those things. So if somebody in the camp tried to get us to do those things, we are not to do those things. Exodus chapter 23, I'm about to land this plane. I smelled it, baby. I smelled it. <laughs> they ain't never. I, I, I bet they turned on the fan and blew it toward the door. <laughs> it's a wave offering. <laughs> That's a good one. They <laughs> should do be paying attention. Yeah, but uh, I want to change it to chapter 34. I'm going to. I'm going to read this one. Chapter 34, Exodus chapter 34, verse 12. No, I'm going to pick up at verse 10. 34, verse 10. Hold up. Y'all just got to believe in us? Got to believe you. All right. May y'all bless you. Amen. Thank you for your presence. Yeah. The people are missing that you grow with, you know what I'm saying? Y'all miss. Yes. For real. Yes, sir. Put on my glass, but I don't read it like <laughs> Verse 10, chapter uh, 34, uh, verse 10. And he said, Behold, Exodus chapter 34, verse 10. And he said, Behold, I cut a covenant. That's how the verse should read. I cut a covenant before all the people. I will do miracles such as have not been done in the earth nor any nation and all the people among which thou shalt see the works of Jehovah for it is a terrible thing that I will do with them. Serve God, protect thou that which I what, which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out. Notice who's doing it. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Havite, the Jezite. Watch this here. I drive them out, right? So if I drive them out, then why do you keep bringing them back? Mm. You know she's a Canaanite. Don't leave it alone. But anyhow, verse 12. Take God. This is the word Shema. Shema, I mean, to take God, protect to thyself. Least thou cut a covenant with who? With the inhabitant of the land. Where thou go, least it be a trap, a snare in the midst of thee. But you shall do what? Destroy their altars, break down their images, and cut down their asherahs of the asherahs of brood. For thou shalt worship no Elohim before Jehovah, whose name is Jealous is a jealous Elohim. Least thou cut a make basic word cut cut a covenant with the inhabitant of the land, and they go a horn after their Elohims and do sacrifices to their Elohims, and you and, and, and watch this and call them and call thee, and thou shalt eat of his sacrifice. Who is it? These are kin folks. And thou, and thou take of thy daughters until thy sons and thy daughters go a horn after their gods, and cut a, and, and make thy sons go a horn after their gods. This is what y'all wanted. To, this is way back then, and we still dealing with that to this very day. So all they doing is going to a celebration, but y'all said no. They already made a covenant. That celebration is connected to a covenant. So today, just based on the information that we know, if somebody comes and says, hey, let's go to the celebration of Moloch. How many people go? But they just went last week or last month on December 25th. Think about it. I'm trying to tell you. So, how many people say, well, let's go to the celebration of Janice? 
Yes, you did. Yes, you did. January the 1st. That's Genesis. And we sacrificed. We turned it up. <laughs> I'm just trying to show you that we need to protect ourselves from this hill. This is not to throw anybody on the bus, and it's showing the time to be self righteous what you didn't do. Because the full as I read from the text, when Achan sinned, it caused us to lose a battle. Amen. And I didn't see anybody say, well, you know, Achan is one did that. Well, why you punish us? To get us to understand that we are body. Amen. I can show you a text that said that if you know if a if an Israelite is doing a certain thing in secret. And you know about it, and you don't say nothing about it, you guilty. Amen. You guilty. People say, oh, so we just started saying, well, it ain't my business. If he's a Hebrew Israelite, he bought a discount and he's doing something, you know about it, and you won't bring it out to the leader, then you guilty. The Torah said that. Amen. The Torah says that. The Torah says that. It teaches that. Now, I know I said a lot here, 